It is Tuesday, August 16th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Tuesday puzzle today, so it should be another relatively approachable puzzle, as we had yesterday, uh, with a theme, nonetheless. And today's relatively approachable edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Lewis Williams, Ryan Eaves, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shulmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Self Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel and making this series a sustainable part of my daily work. And uh, thank you, of course, to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. For that, you can receive all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. You can find that at patreon.com slash Daily Saul. So thank you to everybody who's contributed at any point and any level. And if you do want to become a benefactor, like those first uh, few mentioned uh, patrons, you can also get the Daily Saul Let's Check the Crosses coffee mug. Well, you can put whatever you'd like in it. It need not be coffee. All right. Um, do subscribe to the channel as well if you've been enjoying these videos. And there's also the Daily Solve Discord chat server where you can uh, chat with other members of the community about the New York Times crossword and Wordle and other crosswords and solve puzzles created by members of the community and uh, share puzzles you've created as well. And now let's move on to today's crossword. I'm going to try and do this in a reasonably um, speedy time today um, because I'm slightly time limited. So this is a Tuesday puzzle, of course. It was constructed by Sue Fracker, who is a debut constructor uh, with the New York Times crossword. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Yammer away. Oh, look at this. We have five L's represented in the grid of different sizes. Interesting. Different, uh, so between three and four cells wide and between three and five cells in height. That's interesting. Five L's. I wonder what that means. Anyway, yammer away. Yak, perhaps, or gab, maybe? Oh, yeah, maybe gab, because... Reach 212 degrees Fahrenheit as water. That must be the... I can never remember the Fahrenheit boiling temperature of water, but it must be this. Boil. And crux of the matter is the gist of it. The gist of an idea. The crux of it, perhaps. Pretentious could be arty. Sometimes used to, as a synonym there. And a classic Camar Camaro model. So this is a, a, a car. Chevrolet Camaro. I, I rock, I think. I-R-O-C. I actually don't know what that stands for, but... I've seen it before, and I know that it's, I think it's a it's a high-performance version, maybe. Um, but I don't I don't know what it stands for. Sport with a coxswain. This would be crew. This would be rowing. Um, and Raps Tyler, the creator. I recognize that name. So here we have Boiler in the L. And there's an L at the, the right angle of the L. I don't know if that's relevant. Hmm. Boiler. I don't know what that means. Let's keep going. Eager to get out. Stir crazy. You've been stuck inside too long. And sail rack abbreviation could be irregular. Um, an article of clothing could be on sale because there's some irregularity uh, in its production. Picnic playwright. Is it Inga? Or in I can never remember how to pronounce this playwright's name. I'm very sorry. Um, but I believe this is the answer. And here we have historic Mideast city where Samson died. Oh, interesting. Is it Giza? This is Samson whose hair gave him great strength, presumably. And maker of brownie brick road ice cream. Hmm. Edie's, presumably. Edie's is a U.S. brand of ice cream. I don't know how international it is, really, if at all. Um but I think this must be the answer. And interpretation of a situation is a, re a read. Oh, okay, so this, oh, Gaza. Gaza, not Giza. That makes more sense, actually. Okay, uh, where Samson died. Okay, I thought Giza was sort of surprising in Egypt, but um, but there we go. Okay, makes more sense. Spruce up is neaten something. And then a read interpretation of situation is a read. Element in some food product advertising. Taste. Oh, taste test, right? Sometimes manufacturers, food 
food manufacturers do refer to taste tests in their advertising. A shivering fit ague, maybe? Kind of like, um, you know, I suppose what it says, a shivering fit, a kind of almost sweaty, cold, shivering, ill sensation. Fastener for a bracelet could be a clasp. Backing or the name of Athena's shield, Aegis. Um, we could be within the metaphorical Aegis of some protecting force. Uh, Athena, the Greek god, of course. And moral transgressions are sins. Oral equivalent of a nudge could be pst. So here's something that's oral but not verbal, not, not words, just a sound. And if something amazes you, it stuns you. And here's Casey at the Bat. Casey at the Bat is a, is a poem. It's a baseball poem. I don't remember the name of the, the author. Anyway, it's a famous American baseball poem. And, or is it a song? I think it's both. I think it's a song. Right, no, it is. No, it's not. I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, it is a poem. It was, I think, I think became popular in the late 19th century. Host of Netflix's My Next Guest Needs No Introduction. I'm not familiar with this, but I wonder if it's Letterman. Um, what's his name? Uh, why can't I think of his name? Uh, David Letterman, the former um, late night talk show host, television talk show host. I'm guessing that's who that is. Uh, and later is by baking measures are tables. Oh, no, 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 not R, is. A baking measure, in this case, is a tablespoon. TBSP. In uh, volume, volume-based volume measurements. And then fast food chain with square burgers. Um, not sure offhand. Let's keep looking around. Motorboats trail a wake. A boat leaves um, a wake behind it distinctively. And if one moves like a baby, one crawls. Oh, this must be Wendy's. Uh, burger chain. Okay, fair enough. And item that might be hidden under a front doormat. I mean, classically, that would be a key. Spare key hidden under there. And if one is built like a weightlifter, one is not burly. Too few letters. Um, muscly? Is it? Is it as straightforward as that? Maybe. I've never been a fan of the word muscly. It just doesn't flow well to me. It just doesn't sound like what it is. But but I know that's a completely arbitrary and nonsensical opinion. Spanish friend is an amigo, perhaps. Could be an amiga as well, so maybe we'll just remember that in case we have to change it. Promise to do after being elected. If you promise to do something after being elected, you pledge, you... I'm not sure. Southern constellation. I'm not sure about that either. Fancy scarf and ascot is a... Uh, <laughs> sort of definitely associated with the upper classes and wealth. Um, Southern Constellation, is it Aga? Um, oh, Ara. So promise to do after being elected is run on, right? You run on a particular policy. And early Peruvians are Incas. To slip up is to goof. And poker payment is an ante. Okay, this was Amiga after all the Spanish friends, so the feminine version of the of the noun, and a food fight locale is a cafeteria, I think. Yeah, most most commonly when depicted in films, you see children having food fights in cafeterias. Embarrassing sound when bending over. Well, you wouldn't want to hear a rip when bending over. Oh, it just occurred to me, we didn't observe guest. So here we have boiler, guest, these things that sort of, you don't want them to go wrong in your home or something. Not really sure. Yang's counterpart, yin and yang. Bear's lair is a den. And reprimand with dad. You could dress someone down. So is this going to be dressing? Down on the scoreboard. If you're down on the scoreboard, you're losing. Yes, yeah, so this is dressing. So boiler, guest, dressing. I'm not sure. 
small musical group, a duo. Commuting option, you could commute by bus, as I used to do, uh, when people commuted, I suppose. <laughs> uh, collection of online musings is a blog. And one too many. So many people do still commute. I didn't mean to be dismissive about the idea of commuting, but um, I don't as often anymore. Uh, vacuum brand is Oric. Common mixer is um, tonic, as in a gin and tonic, for instance, tonic tonic water. Um, and then a window part is a pane, pane of glass in a window. So here we have panic. What is this? Ah, I'm going to feel silly when I see the revealer, and I wish I would have been able to piece these together. This reminds me of an only connect uh, question or something where we're given these seemingly unrelated words and we have to find the connection and then it seems obvious in retrospect. 10 pins in two bowls. Uh, that's a spare in bowling when it takes you two bowls of the ball to knock down all 10 pins. And Concord's in brief. So Concord was a supersonic uh, transport plane. Um, that was the uh, Concord was the 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 British French collaborated collaboration um, SST. No longer no longer in existence, no longer in um, operation. Powerful adhesive is super glue, and well-informed about something. You're up on it. You're aware of it. And to creep up on someone is to sneak up on them. And here we have the parenthetical up on. And all that means is that we're going to apply the phrase up on to both the clue and the answer. So to creep up on something is also to sneak up on it, as opposed to just matching creep and sneak, which do match, but it's easier to match them when we add up on to both. So when you see that, that's what that's doing there. In the unfortunate event that I don't finish this puzzle, lest I not finish this puzzle, um, this will be a very long video, I suppose, but it's looking not so likely at this point. A bone in the arm could be your ulna. That's come up a few times recently. An elitist sort could be maybe a snob. And a cry from the curb is... Um, Taxi, someone could be calling for a cab. There we go. Kimono sash could be an OB sash, literally the sash that is used to tie uh, a kimono. And this comes up in the puzzle pretty, I would say, not infrequently as well. This looks like icebox. Yes, a bygone fridge is an icebox. You did used to, in older films and things, people always refer to the icebox. Old fashioned alternative to Venmo or Zelle. Cash? Um, Venmo and Zelle are apps used to send money between, you know, friends or sort of usually in non, non professional or not circumstances. Ironically, there is actually also a competitor to those called literally cash. There is an app called cash. This, this answer is both, an, you could phrase this answer as something like old fashioned or modern alternative to Venmo or Zelle. Uh, but the constructor has not done so in this particular case. Fitting abbreviation hidden in second nature. Well, we can see in the words second nature, the fitting abbreviation DNA is uh, spelled out. And the relevance there, I suppose, is the implication that DNA contributes because it's sort of part of the design of a given species and it sort of contributes to your instincts, I guess, your second nature. Um, an interlocking puzzle is a jigsaw puzzle. And a major artery is an aorta. Uh, there you go. Um, as in the heart. And then a dance none done to Hava Nagila would be the Ahura, so the Jewish uh, dance. And adequate space to move around as found in this puzzle circled letters. Oh, they're rooms. They're rooms. Elbow room. Ah, I am annoyed I didn't get that. Ah, that's frustrating. So what's this one? Win easily, route, and then 
in accordance with, oh no, not route, win easily, romp maybe? Oh, romper room, right. And in accordance with is per, in accordance with your, inst with your instructions, per your instructions. A weighty work could be a tome, and a love of Caesar could be a more, so literally love in Latin. And then here we have BBs, for example, are a form of ammo, ammunition, so in a BB gun. And because this is an abbreviated clue, we also abbreviate the answer from ammunition to ammo. All right, mula is, could be dinero, use the Spanish and slangy way in English often. And then over it all, if you're over it all, you're just, you've, you've seen it, you're done, you're jaded. Seven Dwarfs Blank Train Disney World Ride. Um, I've never been to Disney World, but I do recognize this as Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. And commuting option, oh, another one. So we had bus and um, I'm not sure. <laughs> errand runners are aids, maybe. You have an aid run an errand. And like neon and argon are inert gases, I suppose. Um, duped is um, led on, maybe? Oh, commuting option by, by rail. Yes. Yes, I have. Uh, these days when I do commute, it is by rail. And duped is led on. Right, there we go. Uh, depot is station. Oops. I didn't realize the puzzle was over, so that came a bit... Uh, it was a bit of a surprise. Anyway, depot is abbreviation and... Or depot. <laughs> depot is station. Yes, there we go. As in a, as in a, a bus depot or, or a, a, that sort of thing. And then... I think we observed everything else. So there we have it. It was indeed another fairly gentle puzzle, as was yesterday's, uh, which I don't mind early in the week. I sort of prefer it early in the week, just to have a few uh, nice, straightforward solves. And we had our th our elbow room theme. That's very clever. So we, uh, we literally had elbows illustrated in the puzzle of various sizes, and they uh, suggested five room related phrases. The boiler room, guest room, dressing room, panic room, and romper room. I have to admit, I don't actually know what a romper room is. I think I I think I only really know that phrase from its more idiomatic usage, but I don't think I know what a literal romper room is. I'll have to look that up. Anyway, uh, the rest of the puzzle was, I think, again, as I say, relatively straightforward. We had we had a few proper nouns scattered around there, but I don't think any bad examples of really onerous crosses. Yeah, I think that was a perfectly reasonable two-step puzzle and a nice debut from Sue Fracker with this elbow room theme. And that's that. Let me know how you fared. And uh, I actually, there were I don't think there were any corrections from yesterday's video. It was a fairly straightforward puzzle yesterday, so no no comments that uh, needed to correct the record for my recording. I think there were a couple cases today in which I uh, mused aloud that I wasn't sure about the kind of meaning or origin of something, so perhaps perhaps tomorrow we'll have uh, some, some comments of that nature, but not today. So with that, I think all that remains is to bring this video to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle and the, the solve. And I hope you'll be back tomorrow for the Wednesday puzzle where we might, in fact, step up a bit in difficulty from yesterday and today with another themed puzzle that contains maybe just slightly more resistance, slightly more challenge. Uh, we'll have to come back and see. I hope you do. And until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.